Oh my God. Here we are, headed into act three, the final battle and the end. And first of all, you really need to take a day or a week to celebrate that you got this far. Most people who attempt a novel don't get anywhere near where you have. At this point, there's no stopping you. This book is going to happen. And here's some more good news. There's really only three parts to Act 3, and you've set it all up already. But if you haven't done it yet, stop here and make your personal list of 10 best endings. And of course, add that to your master lists notebook. Now that you've got some endings in mind, let's see what they probably have in common. Act three is the final quarter of a book or film, and usually it's the shortest quarter. It's often divided into two major sequences and a third shorter but critical sequence or scene. So, sequence seven. First is just getting there. The protagonist has to get to the site of the final battle, and they do this in a scene that Hollywood calls storming the castle. Two is the final battle itself. The protagonist and the villain face off. Three is the resolution and new way of life. And I hope that thinking of it as just three parts is going to take away some of your anxiety about having to write it. Here's what we usually see. The protagonist makes a new final plan based on the revelation and new information of the act two climax. The plan generally involves storming the castle either a real castle or a metaphorical one. The castle is most often, in some way, the antagonist's home turf. And it's usually a bit of a journey. The protagonist will have to get there and get in. There may be a ticking clock. The protagonist may reassemble the team, and there may be a very short training sequence. The team very, very often goes into the castle together at first and there's a big team battle that climaxes sequence seven. In this battle, we may see the allies' character changes and the winning of their desires. We may lose an ally or allies, or at least think we lose them. We may also get the defeat of minor opponents or minions. Then in sequence eight, the protagonist goes into the final battle alone to face the antagonist mano a mano. It's usually the villain's home turf, so the protagonist is at a disadvantage. And the castle is often a visual and literal representation of the protagonist's greatest nightmare. We probably see the protagonist's character arc, we may also see the antagonist's character arc, although often there is none. We get a terrifying, or sometimes poignant, look at the true nature of the antagonist. Possibly there is a huge final reversal or reveal, a twist, or even a whole series of payoffs. And everything that the protagonist has learned in their journey helps them win the battle. Unless you're writing dark, in which case they may not win or that win comes at a terrible cost. Then in the resolution or epilogue, we see these elements. A return to the ordinary world. The protagonist and the team need to get home. Full circle. Not every story uses this technique, but often we see the protagonist return to a significant place from the beginning of the story. And we see them repeat an action or event that shows their character growth. This repetition of an action or event 
often happens in the final battle. And finally, we get a glimpse into the new way of life that the protagonist will now be living. Sometimes there's a ceremony and awards. The protagonist and the team are honored by the community that they've just served or saved. And we see the final bows. Just like in theater, we need to see all our favorite characters one more time. This may happen earlier in the team battle, or it might be combined with the ceremony. Then there's some kind of closing image, which may be a mirror of the opening image. So you're an old pro at this by now. Take one of the movies on your best endings list and watch Act 3 looking for these three parts.